Hello everyone, welcome to our online video tutorial series and today we will discuss about class 11 topic sets part 1.3. So let's start. So dear students, till now we read about the definition of a set, representation of a set in various form, empty set, equivalent set and the equal set, finite set and infinite set and the cardinal number. In this video we will learn about Subsets, power set, interval as a subset of real numbers, and universal set. So let's start today's class. First of all, we will discuss about subset. As the word indicates that sub, sub means a smaller part of a set. Let's take an example. Let this set B represents the students of your school. And let set A represents the students of your class. So your class is a part, a smaller part of your school. That means it's a sub part of your school. So set A is to be noted as subset of B. So in this case, set A is a subset of B. In mathematically, we can say that if all the elements of A are also belongs to B, then we can say that A is a subset of B. So let's define it. If a set A contains elements, in which all the elements of set B are as well, then A is known as the subset of B. See, this is to be read as like this. X belongs to A and X belongs to B. That means all the elements which belongs to A are also belongs to B. Then we will say that A is a subset of B. The converse is also true, that is, if A is a subset of B, that means all the elements of A also belongs to B. So, on the other hand, if B is not a subset of A, then it is represented as B is not a subset of A. Here you may notice this, this symbol, this symbol represents the subsets. So, A is a subset of, this is to be read like this, A is a subset of B. Okay. And where this A is a subset, then B is known as the superset. B is known as a superset of A. So now we will discuss about the equal sets. You may think that in the previous video also we discussed about the equal sets. But now we will discuss the equal sets from the point of view of subset. Let's start. So I have taken two sets A and B. And as you know, here A and B are equal sets. So if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, it means that if all the elements of A lies in B and all the elements of B lies in A, that means it implies that A is equal to B. So if A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A, that is possible only when A is, if and if A is equal to B. So the above condition give a wonderful insight. How? See, if A is a subset of B, okay, and it's also vice versa true that A is equal to B. So, A is a subset of A itself. So, that means one insight it will give us that every set is a subset of itself. Okay, so because the elements which lies in A also belongs to A. So, every set is a subset of itself. A null set will be a subset of itself. Since it does not have any element, so it is also a subset of every other non-empty set. So my dear student, here we got two very important results that every set or we can say that every non-empty set will have at least two subsets that the set itself and the empty set. So let's write all the subset of this set A having two elements 1, 2. Let's write. So first of all, Zero elements, no elements, that is a set phi. Then sets those contains one element will be this one, these two, and the set having two elements will be one, comma, two, only one. So how many total subsets we got now? We got four subsets that so here I have a table which is uh, describing about the subsets of set and the number of subsets. So in the first column I have written the cardinal number that number of elements present in that set. So here is, these are the sets and these are the subsets and how many subsets we will have. Let's understand this. 
if I am discussing about phi, so it is cardinal number will be 0 and subset will be the set itself. So how many subsets? 1 that can be written as 2 raised to power 0. And if I am discussing about the subsets of the this set, how many elements? 1 element and how many subsets? The set itself and the phi. So number of subsets will be 2 that can be written as 2 raised to power 1. And if I am talking about a comma b, so it is having two elements. So number of subsets will be 4 that set itself, phi and set having one element a and b. So how many subsets? 4. So I can say that 2 raised to power 2. Similarly, if I have the three elements, then number of subsets will be 8. 3, 6 and 2, 8. So total number of subsets will be 8 that can be written as 2 raised to power 3. So if you observe them very carefully, you will get an insight that 2 raised to power 0, that means number of elements is 0, then number of subsets will be 2 raised to power 0. If number of elements is 1, then number of subsets will be 2 raised to power 1. If number of elements is 2, then number of subsets will be 2 raised to power 2. If 3, then 2 raised to power 3. If a set is having 4 elements, let A, B, C, D, 4 elements, then how many subsets it will have? 2 raised to power 4, that means 16 subsets. And if we apply this induction method, if a set is having n elements, then number of subsets will be 2 raised to power n. And this is a very important result, dear students. So if a set is having n elements, then number of subsets will be 2 raised to power n. Let's correct, make correct statement by filling the symbols subset or not a subset in the blank spaces. Let's see. So check this. Having the element 2, this side also. 3, yes. 4, yes. So this set is a subset of this one. So that's why I put a symbol there. So in this one, this element A is not available here. So it's not a subset. That means all the elements of this set must be present there. X is a student of class 11th in your school and X is a student of your school. So as you know that this is your uh, class 11th, if I say, and a student of class 11 must be a student of your school. Correct. So yes, it's a subset. X is a circle in a plane. So X represents the all the circles in a plane with the different radius. And right hand side we have the circle in the same plane with radius 1 unit only. That means this is set does not include all the circles because it is having all the circles with different radius. And here we have the radius only 1. So it's not a subset. X is a triangle in a plane. X is a rectangle in a plane. So triangles are not included in rectangles, so it's also not a subset. X is an equilateral triangle in a plane and X is a triangle. So all the equilateral triangles are included in the triangle. So we can say that yes, it's a subset. X is an even natural number and X is an integer. So if X is an even natural number, so every even natural number is a integer also, then we can mark it as a subset. So now we have to examine whether the following statements are true or false. Let's see. So is it a true statement or false statement? See this A available, B available. So you, you can see that this is a subset of this one, but it is marked as a not a subset. So it's a false statement. A, E and this side is written in the set builder form. Let's write first in the roster form. X is a vowel in English alphabets. A, E. I O U. So are these elements present here? Yes. So this statement is a correct statement or you can say that a true statement. Next is 1, 2. The element 2 is not present in the right hand side. So we cannot say that it's a subset. So it's a false statement. Element A is available here. Yes, it's a true statement. element this set a belongs to this one so this is a false statement because no such element is available here see if i'm checking this should be an element so this and this are not equal first thing so here set a is not available in the right hand side so i will say that it's a false statement 
So here we have element A and the right, left hand side we have set A. X is an even natural number less than 6. So what are the even natural numbers less than 6? 2 and 4. And X is a natural number which divides 36. The so numbers who divide 36 is 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, then 6, then 9, 12, and 36, 18 also. So 2 and 4 are available here. Yes, it's a correct statement. So it's a true statement. Let A is this set. How many elements this set is having? Just check this. 1, 2 and this is a single element my dear students because it is included in this basis. So, we will treat it as a single element. So, 3 and 4. So, total how many elements? 4. And now we have to on the basis of this set we have to tell which of the following statements are incorrect and why. So, first let me make the diagram of this one. So, this is the set A having these 4 elements and now let us see what he asks us. So, I am taking three sums simultaneously because they look alike. Okay. See, if I am writing subsets, so these are the elements. You can see that this is an element of set A. So this belongs to set A. If I have to write the subset, then I have to write the sign of set, then element, and then I can say that yes, it's a subset of A. So now we can very clearly say that is this a subset of A? No, it's a false statement because this is an element of a A. It's an incorrect statement. Yes, this is correct, and this is also correct. One belongs to A. Yes, it's correct. One is a subset of A. No, one is an element of A. So it's not a subset of A. If I had to write the subset, then how I have to write down like this? Braces and the element. So 1, 2 and 5 are these elements a set having these elements is a subset of A? Yes. So are they belongs to 1? A? No. No such element. See if I treat it as a single element so that does not belongs to A. I cannot find any element which is set 1, 2 and 5. So this is not an element in the set A. 1, 2, but 3 is not there. Single 3, that element is not available here. So I can say that this is an incorrect statement because this 3 does not belongs to set A. 5 belongs to A. No, because no 5 is available here. But 5 is a subset of every set. That's why it's correct. And see, it means that element 5 is available there. Can we see that element 5 is available there? No, because it is having only 4 elements and none of them is equal to 5. So, next concept is power set. What is a power set? Power set is the set of all the subsets of A. So, it is a set which contains all the subsets of a set. So, a previous example we had taken that subsets of A we had written. So, I am quoting the same examples. So, power set of A will become the set of all the subsets. So, if I list all the subsets in a set, then this is known as the power set of A. So, how many elements this power set will have? As many subsets this A will have. So, number of elements in power set will be 2 raised to power. How many elements? 2. So, 4 elements. So, these subsets will become the elements for the power set. And in general, if I can say that if number of elements in A is n, then number of elements in power set of A will be 2 raised to power n. So on the base of that, we have a problem. How many elements has power set of A if A is equal to 5? So if A is equal to 5, then cardinal number of A will be? Yes, it will be 0. Cardinal number of A will be 0. And then number of elements in the power set will be 1. How? Because then subsets of A will be, so subsets of A will be 2 raised to power 0. That means 1. So number of, as many subsets, that many number of elements in power set. So power set of A will have 1 element. Subset of set of real numbers. So this is a set of real numbers. 
and q stands for rational number so all the rational numbers are subsets of real numbers set of integers will be a subset of rational number set of whole numbers will be a subset of integers and set of natural numbers will be a subset of whole numbers so i can list it like this natural numbers are the subset of integers and integers are the subset of rational numbers and they are the subset of real numbers and in another diagram we can see that this is a set of real numbers and we can divide it into two subsets that is a irrational number set and set of the rational numbers so these two are the subset of real numbers now we'll discuss about intervals as subsets of real numbers see dear student when i am talking about two numbers two real numbers and uh, there exist infinite many real numbers so we cannot list all of them so what we will do we will list them as a interval like your school starts at 7:30 okay and school closes at 1:40 so what happens this is an interval of time because between that time so many minutes hours nanoseconds so many things are there so we cannot list all of them so we will make them as a interval let's see how so this i take a number line and two real numbers a and b on this so this will be written as close interval a and b so first let us understand this what does it mean close interval and open interval when i use the word close interval means this a and b both are included see for this particular these dots will be used darken dot will be used that means this number a is included as well as this number b is also included okay so that in the set builder form i can say this is a set of x where x belongs to real number and what is x x lies from a to b where x is also equal to a and x is also equal to b let's take an example if i say 7 to 10 and if i use these brackets these uh, square brackets it means that all the real numbers from 7 to 10 including 7 including 10 are included in that interval another example so this side you can see a difference in the symbol here it is dark here it is a hollow circle it means a is included and b is not included so this side it is open so one side i use this square bracket and one side i use this open bracket so it means that a is included but b is not included if i say that same example if i take 7 to 10 where i included that 7 not 10 means the value cannot be 10 it can be 9.999999 whatever we want how many nines we want but it can never be equal to exactly 10 so 10 is not included that's why it's an open so in set builder form i will write down x where x belongs to real numbers and the value of x is greater than equal to a and less than b this side now a is not included but b is included so this will that brackets will be changed and in set builder form i will say that x is more than a but x is less than equal to b and if i both the brackets are open then it means neither a nor b is included and it is to be written like this x belongs to real number and the value of x lies between a and b so let's do some practical problems based on this write the following as intervals so here x where x belongs to real numbers and x lies from minus 4 to x is less than equal to 6 so minus 4 is not included here but 6 is included so i should use like this minus 4 open interval and 6 i will use a square bracket so minus 4 to 6 this x belongs to real number where x lies between minus 12 and minus 10 and both the numbers are not included so open interval i will use minus 12 to minus 10 here 0 is included so i will use square bracket towards 0 and 7 is not included so open interval here both the terms are included 3 as well as 4 so 3 and 4 both are included so close interval write the following intervals in the set builder form 
So now intervals are given and we have to write them in the set builder form. So first interval is minus 3 to 0 where neither minus 3 nor 0 is included. So both the sides will not use equal to sign. So I will say that x belongs to real number and x is more than minus 3 and x is less than 0. Next is 6 and 12. So both the numbers are included. So I will use equal to sign here. You can feel that. Here 6 should not be included. So this equal to sign we will remove. Remaining will be the same. And in the next part minus 23 to 5. So we can say that x is more than equal to minus 23 but less than 5. Now we will discuss about the universal set. What is a universal set? So universal set is a set which contains all the elements of objects of other sets. Including its own elements. So it's usually denoted by the symbol capital U. So let's take an example. Here I'm taking, let I have three sets A, B and C and elements of set A, B and C are like this. Set A is having element 1, 3, 6, 8. So four elements. Set B is having 2, 3, 4, 5. And set C is having 5, 8, 9. And we have to write a universal set for them. That means we have to find a set which contains all the elements of the set A, B and C. Dear students, please note that when we are talking about universal set, that means we are talking about the sets under consideration. So here we have A, B, C under consideration are the some natural numbers I can see. Let's make a universal set. So it will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9. So all the elements of A, B and C are included in this universal set. So universal set may carry more than A, B and C. So we can include here 7 also, 10 also. In other words, you can say that universal set is a super set of all the sets under consideration. Okay. So what universal set you propose for each of the following? Set of right triangles. That means set of all the triangles if I say. Then this will be a part of the set of all the triangles. So I can say that set of all the triangles will become the universal set for this. And same for the isosceles triangle. I can say that yes, all the set of triangles will be behave as the universal set for these two sets. So that was all about today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Happy learning. Thank you.